like your tea in the morning, Mike? Strong, no sugar. Yeah. Almost without any milk, but a little Oh, we're similar. You're Strong. a bit more milkier with your yes, tea. Yes, but the, the, the question in a way is how, how would you describe what you do to the tea in order to get it to the strength you want? Um, do you mash it? For example, it? Mash, do you mash the tea? Yes, the tea bag, yes. Yeah. You, and you would say that, yeah. would you? Mash it or stir it. Because no, ma mash apparently is one of those words, depends on where you come from as to whether you, whether you use that phrase, dialects. Or, yeah, or oh, masks. Okay. I'd, I'd you either mash or you mask or mask. I'd pummel it. <laughs> okay. Whatever that means. Yeah, I don't think that's regional, that's just... Uh, Practical. Other things that might catch you out, you know, in the middle of the day, are you eating? Uh, do you eat snapping? Snapping? Or, or, or do you have a packed lunch? I've never heard that. Me snapping, never, heard never heard that. Heard. No, Me neither. No. Tuck, tuck box. Yeah. Mm. It's a little tuck yeah, box. I've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, these are all words. It depends on where you come from as to whether you use them. Like silly, gormless, daft. All of these words apparently come from different places. It depends on where you come from, whether you use them. Why is it important? Well, it matters where we're from and how we've developed and our language has developed. The University of Leeds wants to carry out a new survey of English dialects. We'll find out more, but here's a piece from their archive. It's quite lovely. And don't forget to put a bit of salt in, because you always want to put a bit of salt in. And then you want a quarter of a pound of currants and a quarter of a pound of raisins and a bit of candied peel and half a pound of sugar and mix all that up together, and then you put it into a tin and put it in the oven. Each peach, pear, plum, in comes Tom Thumb, Tom in the wood, in comes Robin Hood, Robin Hood in the cellar, in comes Cinderella, Cinderella at the bowl, in comes Henry Hall, Henry Hall at the table, in comes Betty Grable, Betty Grable is a star, S-T-A-R. She uh, told me how she suffered with rheumatism, and uh, every, you know, and how she would like me to send her some mole's feet. So um, I sent her some, and so I told her, as I do, did nearly all of them, to make a small satchel and wear them as near the affected limb as possible. She said, my pain went and I felt like a young woman of 19. <laughs> It's a great story, that one, isn't it? <laughs> it's a good story. Um, those were just um, a few of the hundreds of recordings collected uh, by the University of Leeds. And the project leader, Fiona Douglas, is with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's quite interesting listening to those dialects um, and not necessarily being able to pin, particularly the first one, pin it down mm. to where it's from. It sounded as if it could be almost from anywhere. And, and I suppose this is the point, isn't it, that dialects aren't necessarily so obvious anymore. Well, and of course they change over time. Yeah. So quite a lot of the recordings that we have were done back in the 50s. Um, and they were done often, I mean, the lady who was making the bread, um, you know, she was 65 when that recording was made. So her language dates back, you know, almost to the last century. I mean, she was born in 1890. Does dialect dilute with age? <sighs> Oh, I don't think it dilutes with age, but I think, I mean, one of the reasons why the original Survey of English Dialects, which is um, part of the collection that we have, one of the reasons it was done was after the war, um, people were worried, researchers were worried that the dialects were going to be diluted because people would move around more. Mm. Um, and so they wanted to capture the dialect before it changed too much. Um, so I think dialect does change over time, but it's certainly not gone. Um, I mean, the, the scraps words for those bits of battle that you get in fish and chips. I mean, that's still alive and kicking. Uh, I only arrived in Yorkshire and I fell foul of that one. Now, in the leading, we mentioned the, uh, the, da the daft, silly, gormless, balmy. Mm. Now, so this is a word to describe someone, you know, someone's behaviour or, mm -hmm. or their behaviour pattern. So where, where, who, who has these words and where, where, who, who says daft, who says silly? Well, daft is much more northern, and I hadn't realised that, because I have daft, and you'll tell that I'm Scottish. Um, so daft is quite a northern one. Uh, is it daft me. or daft? It would be daft if it's in the north. Right. It'd be a short Sorry. Path. Yeah, daft in the north. Um, and then barmy is sort of down towards sort of East Anglian direction. Um, and then silly sort of in the middle. Um, but I hadn't realised that daft was northern, and, and some of my um, students um, are in the south of England, and they would sort of say, oh, that's a, a northernism. Really? Yeah, because I, I wasn't aware I, of I would have thought daft was one of those phrases that has just, has just become absorbed by everyone. I think, it's, I think it has moved, um, and I think a lot of words are like that. They, they move um, and they get 
used more widely. Um, and you, you can't necessarily predict which way it's going to go. But we still certainly have lots of these words. Um, I mean, my students seem to have different words for the remote control. Like what? Well, I mean, I would call it a remote, and some of them do too, but um, a zapper, a whizzer, and, and all sorts of things. And it hadn't even occurred to me um, that that would be the something gizmo? with the gizmo? the gizmo, yeah. I've heard the gizmo. Is that what you call it? Well, I, I call everything, and that's, that's a gizmo. That's, these all, everything's a gizmo to me. I'm a gizmo. <laughs> um, can you map the movement of dialect? Because that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, what we're going to do is digitise the collection that we already have. Um, so that comes from the Survey of English Dialects, which ran um, from just after the Second World War until 1978. And then we've got um, the stuff from the Institute of Dialect and Folklife Studies, which was also based at Leeds, and that ran from 64 um, until 83. So we've got historical stuff, but we're going to collect present-day stuff, and we will be able to map it um, for present day and for the past as well. And it's English dialogues you're talking about. People realise that you are, you are Scots. Have you, got, have you got a word that is, you know, absolutely Scots, that is still sort of retained by the Scots that we don't necessarily use? I've got two. Go on. Um, fankle, when you get yourself all kind of confused or in a How, tangle. What is it? Fa a fankle. A fankle, is, so that's a confused mood, that's is it? kind of it? confused mood, or it can be like wool that gets in a tangle. Okay. Is it a fankle? Sounds like a fat ankle. Uh, well, it, it just means everything kind of confused and, and kind of mixed together. So a fankle. Yeah. So sometimes I get myself into a fankle, mm -hmm. and if I'm in too much of a fankle, I might get scunnered. Um, which kind of sounds like what it is. Um, very annoyed. Is it S T O? Scunnered. S C U N N E R E D. Scunnered. Scunnered. And that's what, that's when things are kicking off. Yeah. Well, that's when you. That's how you feel if you're very upset and annoyed and, and angry. You're just scunnered, and it, it kind of sounds like what it means. Well, you see, those have stayed intact in Scotland because yeah. those are two words I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah. My colleagues at Leeds are, are learning them. Uh. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Is when people from different parts of the country they just start injecting words. Yeah. And they Absolutely. become more common. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see if we're scunnered by the end of the programme, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> 7.45 is the time now.